at the end of the day, we have to decide, one, what do I want? Two, am I willing to do what it takes? This could be in your personal life. It could be in your investing life. Simply move forward and taking those steps would provide so much clarity. If you're not conscious about your investment strategy, you won't end up where you want to be, not financially or as a human. On this show, we interview highly successful investors and share how they overcame limitations to become unstoppable forces of success. If you're ready to learn what it is to be a conscious investor so you can end up where you want, keep listening. Hey, conscious investor, are you looking for more momentum in your life? So many people are, and there are so many different hacks out there and just do this and stand on your head and drink this special frou-frou drink three times and you're going to have momentum. But guess what? A lot of times we feel that that is not adequate. In this episode today, I want to share with you a powerful mindset shift that can completely revolutionize the momentum and your productivity. But we're not just talking about in your your work life and in your productivity and creating and generating more monetary products and everything. We're talking about personal freedom. We're talking productivity in every element, every facet of your life. Before we jump into this hot topic, an amazing mindset shift, I want to do the weekly shout out. Shout out to TB46. Thank you so much for taking time to leave a review. You know it's wind in my sails and I completely appreciate it. This um, this person writes, great podcast, five stars. Julie's podcast has great content and guests. She does a great job of making information easy to understand for her listeners. That is always my number one goal. Can we make something simple? Because we have enough complexity in all of life. So let's see if we can just, you know, uh, distill it down to the easiest, most simple forms. All right, let's jump in. That's it. Yeah, I'm just jumping in. Um, Recently, all of this really came full circle for me, this concept of gaining, gaining momentum as I was taking my daughter to have a mole removed. Yeah, I know that sounds so weird. And I apologize for sort of, I sort of apologize for, for bringing this up. But this is, this is how I learned this lesson. This is what allowed my mind to see the full circle on momentum because of what was taking place. My daughter was born with a mole in the center of her chin. And it has, you know, just, it's become prominent. And she sits there and fiddles with it. And then it begins, it's just not cool. And we all know how that can go. We all know somebody with a mole on their face that, you know, they're fiddling with. And it's just not a healthy outcome, you know, opens ourselves up for a lot of opportunity. Several months ago, we we spoke with our daughter and we said, hey, we noticed that you have this habit. We've been working on this, you know, breaking that habit. And ultimately, it came to this point where she made the decision because we always, we did not force her or coerce her, but we really want to empower the kids to think for themselves, think about the outcomes they want and make some decisions towards that. She decided, okay, I, I'm ready. I'd like to remove this mole. Could be a health issue if I don't do that. And in that process, she kept cycling back. Same questions, same questions, same questions. So in your mind's eye right now, even if you're driving, your mind's eye doesn't mean, does not mean closing your eyes. It means like, wow, just see with your mind and visualize for a moment a clock, just a normal clock. The kind of clock you would see in the classroom when you were a kid that you'd always be looking at, you know, because you're like, when is recess? When is lunch? When is school out? Right. And you're looking that kind of boring, just typical clock. And I want you to start at 12 o'clock, top of the hour. And this is a cycle that my daughter went in. As we're driving down to go to the dermatologist, we started at 12 o'clock and then it would go to one o'clock and she'd be like, Oh, hey, mom. Um, so how much is it going to hurt? What's it going to be like? Um, what? And she'd ask all these questions and I would give her the answer to these questions. And we'd go and then we'd get right back to the top and then we'd start the exact same question cycle all over again. And it would go around and around and around and around and we'd end up. And finally, <laughs> Generally speaking, I have been told that generally speaking, I'm a very patient person. I've had a lot of people say like, I 
you have exorbitant patience. I do have a decent amount of patience. I don't have patience for answering the same question over and over and over again and ending up at the exact same spot. And really what happens is that sometimes we think we have a perception and a way of thinking. And we think that um, we have to maintain this one perspective the whole time. And we falsely believe that whatever a decision is, it is a forever and fatal outcome. Okay, so for my daughter, well, technically, when you have a mole removed, technically, it actually can grow back, uh, depending on what kind of mole it is. So maybe it's not a forever decision. But we'll just say this is a forever decision for her. But is it a fatal decision? Is it life-threatening to her? No, it's not. But in our mind, we have a tendency to exaggerate all the decisions that we're making as if if we make the wrong decision, the whole world is going to collapse. Our world is going to implode and it's just going to be doom and gloom. And in all reality, it's just a decision. And in all reality, that decision can probably be reversed. It could probably be corrected, adjusted, modified, course corrected. In fact, even with getting this mole removed, we learned from the dermatologist that, well, if it doesn't have the exact outcome, here are the steps that we can take beyond this. So even with this procedure, she still had options ahead of her. But what really stood out to me, I finally said, hey, as we're driving down in the car, and we, I just said, hey, listen, I need to know, I need to know this one answer to the question. Do you want this mole removed? It is, <laughs> this is one of those times where I will say, it is your body. Right now, this is not a life-threatening issue. And so we can postpone or delay this if you're not ready for this outcome. And ultimately, she was able to conclude that she was afraid of the pain that she was going to face. How much is it going to hurt, mom? What are they going to do? In her mind, she's probably thinking of the scariest movie ever or something like that, right? Like these really scary things and tons of pain. And in her mind, she was just imagining and expanding this whole concept. And ultimately, she concluded, no, I really want the mole removed. Her words, not mine. I'm like, okay. If you really want the mole removed, the next question you have to ask is, am I willing to endure what it takes to have the outcome I am looking for? In this particular case, little miss, you're going to be enduring some discomfort that is temporary discomfort, temporary discomfort, but you're going to have the outcome you're looking for. And if you choose to not go this route, then down the road when you decide this, you're probably going to end up having all these same feelings all over again. So you have to decide what you really want. You have to decide, am I really committed to this outcome that I want? Ultimately, she's like, yeah. That's really what I want. I'm really scared of the pain. I'm really scared of how this is going to go down. It just seems so, well, she hadn't ever experienced it before. And conscious investor, as adults, you've had this experience multiple times in your life. It may be choosing your college. It might have been starting your career. It may have been transitioning a career, making decisions for, you know, where our kids go to school. What kind of friends do we invite into their life? And what kind of a friends do we cultivate and support them with? Right? We're so many decisions. By the way, they're friends. I mean, they have to make their own friends, but we want to support them in great choices. But all this to say, we're always making these decisions of stepping into the fearful unknown. And unfortunately, so often, most people get stuck in this cycle. They start at the top of the clock, and then they go around with all their feelings and their fear and, and their anxiety and the what ifs, and 
along the way, they hold on to them and sometimes even let them grow larger. And so by the time they get back to, they, they just end up back at the clock and they end up at the top of the clock, heavier, more burdened, more drained. That's what happens when we don't decide and take action. So what do you think happens? We get to the, to the dermatologist's office. We have to learn a few things and make some decisions. And ultimately, Simone decided once again in that doctor's office, you do have an option. You don't have to go through this right now. We can wait. And ultimately, she's like, okay, let's do it. And from that moment point, that moment forward, she was like one little ha happy camper. Like, oh, okay, this is no big deal. Go ahead, put lidocaine on here. Go ahead, give a shot and everything. And when she was done, she was smiling ear to ear. Why? Because she had released all of that. All of the what ifs, all the things that she had built up in her mind were now no longer there, clouding her judgment, clouding her perspective. She could see clearly. And it's a lot easier once we've experienced something, right? To know like, oh, this isn't as bad as I was thinking. It's going to be okay. And we took this down as a permanent life lesson. Little Miss, as we drove home, we talked about this. Little Miss, you're going to experience this multiple times in life. And we must maintain our perspective. And we must decide, what is it I really want? Now, I've seen this actually happen with an investor. This is an investor at actually did not invite into an investment, believe it or not. It was because I realized this investor was not ready to take the next step. And it would have been painful for both of us if that person was to invest at that point in time. They simply needed more time to incubate. And this took place as I was traveling for due diligence um, on an asset. And there I am taking time because I knew this investor needed some support. And the investor was trying to make a decision. So I carved out time on my schedule. When we leave for due diligence, it's usually pretty spontaneous. And we usually have some appointments that I'm like, sometimes I just don't want to reschedule it because I understand. I want to really nurture and take care of the investors. Well, this investor starts at the top of the clock and this investor goes around the clock and we answer all the questions. We get back up to the top of the clock. All the questions have been answered. The investor feels, okay, I get it. Yep, I'm good. But, and we start down the exact same line of reasoning all over again, back up to the top of the clock. And it's weighty and it's weighty. I want to encourage you, conscious investor, that if we want to maintain momentum, if we want to get momentum, then we cannot hold on to all of these things that are weighing us down. Yes, we absolutely need to address our concerns. We absolutely need to make sure that we have a clear understanding of what is taking place. Yes, we need to understand the risks in everything that is that is involved in what we are following and pursuing, right? right? But at the end of the day, we have to decide, one, what do I want? Two, am I willing to do what it takes? This could be in your personal life, like my daughter having this procedure done. It could be in your investing life, like that investor who just simply needed to move forward and moving forward and taking those steps would provide so much clarity, right? Just like when little miss is at the dermatologist's office and going through this procedure, it's like, oh yeah, this isn't bad because she took action. And when we take action, we actually see the results and the outcome. We gain more clarity. We gain more confidence and clarity and confidence just snowballs into so much motivation, so much momentum, because now we're not afraid. As long as we're stagnant, as long as we're coddling all of those fears and these assumptions and the what ifs, as long as we're just holding on to those and we're staying in one spot, we will never move forward. In fact, we're going to digress in life. It's really draining. It's exhausting. 
and it's very wasteful of the best resources. It wastes precious time. It wastes our energy. It wastes our emotional bandwidth. Sometimes it's our finances. Yeah, because if investing, if we're not investing well, well, we might actually be being set back if our money's just sitting in a bank account, losing to inflation every day. We're not making, we're actually losing. We're not gaining and growing. So I want to encourage you, conscious investor, as you go about your week, challenge yourself, look for the areas where, ask yourself, where do I want more motivation? Once you have that, now ask yourself, what is the ultimate outcome that I want? How committed am I? What am I willing to endure to see this through? I can assure you, having coached many people, having lived it myself, having watched it in my kids' life, lives, plural, right? You can see, and I'm sure you see this in your life as well, if you look at to your track record, your experience, is that as you are taking this mo- these steps, it becomes more comfortable, it becomes clearer, you start to gain that confidence, you start to gain the momentum. So the number one way to gain that momentum, to snowball that momentum, what would you say it is? Just know, what is it? What is it I want? And now you're ready to go for it. You're an amazing conscious investor. If we have not spoken yet personally, you are important to me. Um, I was traveling and I need to apologize. From March through the very beginning of June, there was a ton of travel. I had the blessed opportunity to speak at multiple events, to go do some due diligence on an asset that we're acquiring, which is so amazing, and time to go and meet with fellow partners. So many important things took place. Um, And that was a lot of growth for me. We call that tripping forward, not failing forward, but just, I was just tripping forward, you know? And in that time, Um, my schedule got pretty darn congested. So I want to assure you, if you went onto the calendar to try to find a time, it may have looked like, oh my gosh, Julie has no time. I have time. (laughs) If for any reason there isn't time on the calendar and you're like, "I, I want to talk with you about investing. I want to just talk with you and see, you know, if there's a way that we can support each other, then please just head on down to the show notes and schedule a time there. There should be time. And if there's not, shoot me an email directly julie at threekeysinvestments.com so that we can organize ourselves and get a time scheduled on the calendar. You are important, Conscious Investor, and you have great things to do in this world. Until next time, live big, love bigger, and do great things. What's the big deal about investing in apartments? Why is it better than investing in a slew of single family homes? I've compiled a lot of information on why investing in a multifamily, also known as apartments, will help you reach your investment goals. Head over to threekeysinvestments.com and download the Why Invest in Multifamily Guide today.